check this out. We have a simple web application on our hands that allows us to search through blogs. After we search for something, example, this may be test, uh, it returns us values that contain test. However, let's take a look at the source code of this web application and we can take a look at the resources and JS. You can see that this will load two different JavaScript files. One is called dparm.js and the second one is called searchlogger.js. The dparm.js is literally obfuscated, so honestly, I don't really want to look at it that much. However, the search logger appears to be interesting. There are in total two different functions. One is log query, which apparently just creates a fetch functionality, which just sends a whatever we search to some sort of backend. And we can definitely verify that if we go to fetch.xhr and they refresh the page and you can see that this you know front end will definitely make such a request. The search logger function is very interesting. It creates a config variable. However, it creates params then object or object which will hold a params key and the value of it will be the param the search whatever we search for so literally this after that it checks whether there is a transport url within this config which obviously it's not it's nowhere set it's literally never set so you will just skip this part and finally after it checks whether the params exist which they should it basically calls the log query and it passes the logger which we see that actually occurs so would you believe me that this is vulnerable to XSS and it's actually super easy. Well, I guess you're gonna have to see today's video to see how exactly can we pull that off. And maybe, just maybe, if you want to learn hacking, if you want to learn bug bounty and how to actually overtake these and overcome these obstacles, then check out all of my courses. I have the Ultimate Android API Hacking course, which is literally tied to the bug bounty course, as well as game hacking course, which also includes some of the example cheats. So you actually might as well check them all out. I also got some nice discounts, so yeah. Check them all out. Links are in the description. Now let's actually go with today's video. So this website, as I've said, is actually vulnerable to XSS. But is it, you may ask? Well, I'm going to try my best to explain to you how exactly is this vulnerable and how exactly maybe you can find something similar in other websites. And stick around until the end to see how exactly we're going to try to do that. So the vulnerability is happening right over here. It's not actually happening in the Deparam. Well, you can quite say it is, but we're going to ignore it for now. So let's actually see what this code does without just looking at it. Let's actually go dynamic testing. What we've done in the intro was static testing. Let's now actually go into dynamic to see how it actually works. We can see what the config is maybe to see what actually happens because the search logger function is being called exactly when the window loads. I assume the config will not be available for us. So let's try to do it. Config, uh, yeah, config is not defined. So how can we see what actually is config? And maybe does the transport URL even exist? Well, you can put a breakpoint right over here in the developer tools and you can hit refresh. And as you can see, it will tell you that this has paused in debugger. And over here, you can already see what the config is in the, in the variable and the local scope. So you can see that this actually contains search test, or you can go to console and literally type config and you can see what the params are. And uh, the params are search test. So there is literally nothing which mentions the transport URL. However, if we could get the transport URL here, then that would be amazing. And we could technically then create a new script, which will load our own transport URL. So our goal is to literally get to this, but how exactly can we do that? Well, let's see what the dparm function even does, because what is going on? So one thing we can do is we can literally take the parameter it takes and see what even is it, because we don't actually know it yet. So this is the best way to do it. Ah, so as you can see, it takes the search equals test, which you can see promptly right over here. So that's the parameter the dparm function takes. But let's see exactly what it does. So we can instead of search param a, we can literally go a equals B. And this is weird because it creates a whole new object with a val key and B value. This is a JSON object. So interesting. So now that we understand what this all does, we have basically narrowed down where the vulnerability could be happening in this whole web application. So then after that, it creates a params object. So we can literally just take all of this and see how it looks and it stores it into config. So it creates a whole new object. It creates a params object or dictionary, how you Pythoneers call it. And then it contains search and what I've searched test. Interesting. After that, it checks whether the params exist. However, the transport URL, can we maybe just maybe create this transport URL? Well, it will be difficult, but maybe you can just try to do this. Maybe someone would try to, okay, let's put transport URL and let's do test. But of course, this is going to be a problem, but you can definitely do something interesting. Like, for example, if we now take a look at the config, it is 
params, but there is the transport URL and then test. So something must be happening somewhere else. We, we actually had an error, but this is a WebSocket, so nothing interesting there. Okay. But what if we can pollute the prototype maybe? So maybe that's one of my ideas. So let's try to do dot underscore underscore proto. That's going to be really difficult to pull off. What if we can maybe, because this, this turns it into JSON. What if we can maybe do something like this, like A, A, B. So we can create a sub element of A. So let's try to do that and let's see what happens. Uh, okay, so this was caught in debar. Ah, take a look at this. The config actually now looks params, then A, and then B. This is a weird JavaScript moment, but the dparam function was literally doing this. Okay, interesting. So now that we have all of the puzzle pieces, maybe we can just go with proto, and we can literally pollute the prototype of this object, of the config object, so that it maybe the transport URL still exists, even though it doesn't. If that doesn't make sense, well, trust me, it's just a JavaScript moment. So let's try to create a object let's call it test and let's set it to one two three four let's hit enter and obviously now the config should look normal ah see the params are actually empty but if we take a look at the prototype of this object we can see test one two three four and if we take a look at the prototype of the params or the config object is also test one two three four interesting so now if we go to config dot test uh, actually, we shouldn't do that, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the problem is we have to refresh the page because uh, the, the, the timing is very important. Config.test should re resolve to 1234, even though config is literally containing params and nothing else. So now that we understand that, we can go with transport URL, put it right over here, and let's just let it go to 1234. Let's hit enter. Let's continue. And we do have an error. And it tried to load one, two, three, four script. Well, there we go. You can now basically host a script and execute alert one. However, if the website actually has a CSP policy, that's going to be a bit problematic. So what we can do maybe is just go data like this and then execute, you know, alert one, simple as that. Just like so, pause and debugger, config is empty. However, the config transport URL should contain my stuff, which we can promptly see, and if we Continue, we see alert one pop up and we have solved this lab. Well, this was a very interesting vulnerability to say the least. Prototype pollution can definitely be interesting, but the point of this video wasn't actually to just tell you this all will always exist. I wanted to teach you something. I wanted to teach you the static and dynamic analysis of code and how important it is to understand how to dismantle the code, how to literally take the hood off and see what's going on behind it. Don't be afraid when you're analyzing code for J for XSS or anything like that to just copy stuff and be like, yeah, let's see, let's see whether this, you know, let's see whether this works. Maybe it doesn't, maybe it will. I don't know, but that's the point of it. And yeah, this also will work if I create another G object and this G dot transport URL will still, oh, sorry. As you can see, this will pollute this object. So imagine this, however, you actually remember on my channel that you can use JavaScript to host or Node.js to create backend applications. So imagine this on the backend. Well, if you want to see something like that, then leave a like on this video. Stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.